My name is Noreen Campbell. I am a retired registered nurse. I am also a member of the Disability Council for Dign Dying with Dignity Canada. I would like to take this opportunity to explain to you how important it is to me to have been accepted for medical assistance in dying. A little bit of background could be helpful for understanding my position. I was a student nurse in 1962, 63, I'm ahead of myself, at the Royal Alexandra Hospital in Edmonton. At that time, the hospital had a policy that when patients were dying, if they had no family to support them, a student nurse would be called to go sit and care for this patient. At that time, there was a thing that we talked about called the last dose. That was that if a nurse gave the last dose of morphine to the patient and they died, that nurse could be subject to discipline. As a result, many patients suffered at the end of their lives. Throughout my nursing career, which I just went to my 50th anniversary, has been possibly longer than some people anticipate. But I have continually had opportunities to care for patients at the end of their life. Without doubt, we have made progress in palliative care and the relief of suffering supportive family. But it is not possible to solve all of the problems we encounter. That is one of the reasons I see medical assistance in dying as an option on a continuum of care for people at the end of their life. The situation that we are now in really clearly points to the need for collaboration and people to work for the humane care of people who are dying or chronically disabled and to address their quality of life so that it is worth their continuing an exchange of their experience with us. Much to my surprise when you speak about who is a vulnerable person. It was about four years ago that I realized that my toothache was possibly cancer. It's a bit of a joke because I was a clinical educator for this surgical area for over a decade. But I sat down and I thought, why do I have this pain? Why isn't it better? And it obviously clicked that I needed a biopsy. It is interesting, I am a non-smoker and this cancer is highly associated with smoking. And so I got to experience the bias that people may have, that it's your life, life choices that has put you in a position. And maybe you need to suffer a bit more. Who knows? But what it did teach me is that when you say, who is the vulnerable person? It's all of us. You know, it's a person that you just haven't thought of yet. Could be you, could be your family. Age doesn't matter. How good you've been doesn't matter. How well you eat your broccoli doesn't matter. But what does matter is that we are in the position that Canada has moved forward to offer medically assistance in dying. And at this point, I think I would have to always to express my appreciation to Sue Rodriguez and to Kate Carter and the decisions the Supreme Court made. I do have to say I'm extremely disappointed in the Liberal Government Bill C-14. That the requirement that death be foreseeable has excluded the very people the Supreme Court has ruled in favor of. It has placed a number of the people who could benefit from the opportunity to discuss their anxiety about 
a serious illness or disability and to seek advice and palliative care and support for their concerns. In the past, we had somebody very close to us commit suicide in response to anxiety about a cancer diagnosis. I believe strongly that this is no longer necessary if we could speak openly and sincerely about our anxieties and have the support of the health team and all of our friends and community. I applied for a medical assisted dying June the 7th. I was slightly prepared. I did it because I have had this complication with my breathing possibly due to my surgery for cancer and possibly due to underlying respiratory disease that had not been detected. And I had had hospitalizations including intensive care, etc. And these were repeating and possibly becoming longer. I have excellent palliative care from my family physician and from my specialist. It gives me a great deal of concern when I hear that people who need palliative care, only one third of them may get it. And I feel that we have to look that there are more people than hospice that provides this and give support to family physicians to enable patients to be treated where they are. The benefit of palliative care, I just can't say enough. My support from my community respirologist and respiratory therapy has enabled me to stay home now for almost three years with a few hospitalizations. There is no doubt my condition is deteriorating and I am in stage pulmonary disease. My application for MAID was well received. My family position was very supportive. I am also fortunate, if you want, that I have a disease that actually has lots of documentation that stages it. So in a way, I jumped the hoop of foreseeable death by demonstrating symptoms that are consistent. And there's actually, for those of us inclined to formulas, a formula that predicts how long you will live. My support from the physicians in Victoria who are courageous enough to offer this care was remarkable. My, my support from been remarkable. Moving on, moving along, if I had not got approval, what would I do? And uh, I'm a bit of a passionate planner and my plan was plan B. My plan B was to go to Switzerland I would have to apply for a membership with Dignitas. I have the papers about my condition and psychological state. I am not depressed. I am also not pressured by anybody other than my will as to the course of action that I will take. The next thing that I must have to go to Switzerland is I must be strong enough to go uh, do the flights, etc. And I must be capable of taking the last fatal dose personally, orally. So you can see that this starts to exclude a number of people if you don't go in time. Without access to MAG, I would have to prematurely decide to end my life arbitrarily in order to meet the criteria of going. The other big issue that would come immediately 
and going to Dignitas is can you afford it or not? Okay, Carter went to Switzerland. And that means only people who can afford it would have this escape route. It is so important that every Canadian have access to MAID where they live, in their home, on the hospital unit they're admitted to, wherever they are and as easily and comfortable for that person, this service should be provided. In the end, what MAID means to me, being approved, is a great deal of peace that I can now get on. I have been able to finish publishing articles on my field of nursing wound care. I have loads of projects that you do. There's always family that you have. And I have really enjoyed uh, these days of my life. It is also an opportunity that I have relieved myself of the worry of how I will die. And since I know I have respiratory disease, it will be because I suffocate. It also relieves my family of that stress of going through that experience with me. I would like to thank Dying with Dignity for this opportunity to share my experience with you. Thank you.